Hi friends, welcome to CSCpedia and welcome to wonderful session. Today we are going to discuss about input buffering. So previously we discussed what is the role of a lexical analyzer, isn't it? So today we are going to discuss about input buffering. What is input buffering? So as we know lexical analysis will scan the source input from left to right. Okay. So it means that if we have a statement or input string c equal to a plus b into 5 So what we need to do here So first we need to scan from left to right isn't it So what is c? c is an identifier What is equal to assignment symbol? What is a? a is an identifier plus addition symbol b is an identifier star multiplication symbol and 5 is the number integer to float or float floating point number or whatever so in this way we will scan our input from left to right so this input buffering buffering is nothing but some storage so we will store some source input so how we will store this source input what methods do we follow here so in order to store um, or in order to process the input string here First, we will have two pointers. Let us see what those two pointers are. So, if you see here, as I said, in order to process our source input, we have two pointers. Begin underscore pointer, we call it as BP. Forward underscore pointer, we call it as FP. Right? So, um, we are saying that we are having two pointers, but you know what? Initially both pointers point to the first character of the or the first token of the input stream. So let's take an example here so that you will get a clear idea about that. So int i comma j i equal to i plus 1. Right? So here what is my first character here? My first character is i. Right? So your begin pointer and forward pointer will point to the first character that is i now what happens your begin pointer will stay at that same place and what, what about your forward pointer your forward pointer will always move one position to the right ok now what is forward going forward that means moving forward so forward pointer is always increments to 1 fp equal to fp plus 1 so in the second case your forward pointer will move to n Next, your forward pointer again increments and moves to T. And your begin pointer will stay there. Begin pointer will always stay in the first character. So, what about now? Here, we encounter with a space. If at all any blank space occurs, your strings will stop there. And your both uh, begin pointer and forward pointer points to the I. So now your begin pointer will point here and forward pointer will point here. But, uh, this blank space is like an end of the string. Let us assume. Okay. Now your begin pointer will point at I and forward pointer will point at I. Now what happens? Your begin pointer will never change and your forward pointer keeps on moving one position to the right. It comes here, it comes here, it comes here like that. Okay. So uh, this is a general basic uh, concept of input buffering. So uh, in this input buffering again we have two types of input buffering. Let us see what those two types are. See here, here i is over, in, uh, n is over, t is over. We encountered with a blank space. What we did, your begin pointer and your forward pointer will point to i, small i, right. So we already finished these three, right. Then we can call it as a token. Okay. Next, your begin point is at i. Your forward pointer keeps on moving until it uh, until the last character. Okay. So in this input buffering, we have two schemes. The first one is one buffer scheme. The second one is two buffer scheme. one buffer scheme and two buffer scheme so let us see what these two 
schemes of input buffering. So what is this one buffer scheme here? Buffer is nothing but storage. So we are storing some input here, right? So one buffer scheme in the sense, I have a limited amount of storage. So that my storage capacity is only this much. Now I need to store my information or a string here. So as I said, we have two pointers, right? One is BP and another one is FP. So BP, uh, BP stands for begin pointer and FP stands for power pointer. So at which place this both will start the first character right so what is the first character here i so this is bp begin pointer this is fp so now what happens your begin pointer will always move forward one position to the right okay so your forward pointer will come here again your forward pointer will come here and you encounter with a blank space now your begin pointer will jump to i and your forward pointer will start here again the same process applies uh, what is the limitation of this uh, one buffer scheme the limitation is we have only one buffer that means we have only a single storage if my input string is very long and for example, see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have only 8 blocks. I can store only 8 characters. Okay. So, if my input string is very long, like this int i, comma j, i equal to i plus 1, j equal to j plus 1. So, if this is my input, can I store in this one buffer scheme? Why? Because I don't have enough space to store my input string. So that's a major drawback or major limitation of one buffer scheme. So what I will do is, I will take a two buffer scheme. So I have two storage capacities. If at all, my input string is very long, what I will do is, I will store some part of my input string on one buffer and the remaining part will be stored in another buffer. So let's see how it looks. So I hope you understood one buffer scheme. So what is two buffer scheme here? So if you see here, so the first one is buffer 1 and second one is buffer 2. So I have int i equal to i plus 1. So what's happening here? First my bp and fp will point at i. So this is bp, this is fp. The same process which applies for the one buffer scheme. So I encounter with a blank space. Again my bp and fp will point to i. Now, what if endpoint is reached? See, uh, I got a condition now that I need to use my buffer 2. So, in order to use buffer 2, we need to check where we stop. So, in buffer 1, I stopped at 1. And after 1, I get semicolon. Okay, so my string is int i equal to i plus 1 semicolon, j equal to j plus 1 semicolon. So, in order to differentiate these two, what I will do is, so the first buffer, the character which ended in the first buffer will become begin pointer and the character which started in second buffer will become forward pointer. Are you getting what I am saying? So uh, what I am doing here, my buffer is not enough to store my input string. What I am doing is, I am dividing my buffer into two buffers, buffer 1 and buffer 2. So now your begin pointer will point to the last character of the buffer 1 
and your forward pointer will point to the first character of the buffer two. Then a problem will be solved. So this becomes your begin pointer. This becomes your forward pointer. Okay. So the same process of the forward pointer will uh, move forward. So again we are having a limitation in this. Even if I am using two buffers, if my input string is very large, so where I need to stop? Okay, I have a limitation buffer one. I'm moving. I'm going to buffer two buffer scheme. So even though I'm having a limitation here, I can't go for three buffer scheme. If I am having limitation in three buffer scheme, I can't go for four buffer scheme. So I should have an end for this, right? So what we need to do is is very simple. Here we need to give E O F that is end of my file or end of my string. Then your forward pointer will reach semicolon, and after that your forward pointer will reach end of the file and stops here. You understood? So this is two buffer scheme. So this is a typical input buffering concept. So uh, we can write a pseudo code for this so that you will get a clear idea about this. So uh, if we don't have any end of the file here, E O F, then two buffer scheme will also have limitations. Then we can we'll go for three buffer scheme. Again we have we'll have limitations. Then we go for four buffer scheme. So there is no stop for this. So for that reason, what I am doing here, I am placing end of the file so that my string will stop here. That's it. So we'll write a pseudo code for this so that you will get a clear idea about this. So if you see here, we are writing a pseudo code for input buffering. So if uh, forward pointer equal to E O F of buffer one, if we encounter with E O F, it means that a buffer is stop. So end of first buffer, refill buffer two. So it means that we need to use buffer two. Buffer one is filled. Your F P pointer will increment F P plus plus. Else if F P equal to E O F of buffer two, okay. If end of the file of buffer two encounters, refill buffer one, F P plus plus. Else if F P equal to E O F of input, your entire input is over, then return. That means we need to terminate. Else F P will get incremented. Still input has to be scanned. So buffer one, we get an input uh, end of the file. We go for buffer two. If at all we get end of the file for buffer two, we'll see whether input is available, still available or not. If input is also over, then we can terminate our process. So this is input buffering. I hope you understood what input buffering is. So if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Please share my videos to your friends and well wishers, and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.